So, so far I have only covered movies on my channel, particularly horror movies, just because that is what I love. But something that I'm also passionate about is music, specifically rock, post-hardcore, punk, and really any and all types of metal. So when I heard that Linkin Park is back and they have a new song, I was really excited, like most people. I have always loved Linkin Park. I mean, Mike Shinoda's rapping coupled with Chester Bennington's super powerful throat shredding vocals was one of my favorite things in high school. <laughs> so um, obviously they do have a new singer, Emily Armstrong, and I, like most people, really miss Chester Bennington. I was actually watching the Saw franchise the other day, and it's kind of comforting to see him in the seventh installment of the franchise. He's actually was a pretty good actor, <laughs> low key, um, but obviously they've shifted into a new vision. They have Emily Armstrong now, new singer, new album, new song. I have not listened to the song yet. I'm really excited to listen to it. I have been needing to restrain myself from going ahead and listening to it, but I wanted to do it for the first time on my channel here and get my reaction. And I also wanna go over some of the controversies that have come out of this as well revolving around Emily Armstrong. So first let's react to The Emptiness Machine by Linkin Park and then we'll talk about it, get into the controversy and all the good stuff. So let's go. Your blades are sharpen with precision Flashing your favorite point of view I know you're waiting in the distance Just like you always do Just like you always do Already pulling me in Already under my skin And I know exactly how this ends I Watch me bleed Gave up who I am for who you wanted me to be Don't know why I'm hoping for what I won't receive Falling for the promise of the emptiness machine The emptiness machine Okay, let me pause here just for a second. My first impression of the song, to be honest, I have to always be honest with you guys, started out a little slow for me, okay? But once Mike got into the chorus is what I assume it to be the, um, I think it was, I let you cut me open just to watch you bleed. Really nice, really melodic. Um, I like that, Mike. We haven't heard from Emily yet. I'm sure we're about to. And I'm ready for it to ramp up and kick us in the face. So let's continue. Okay, quick, quick thoughts real quick on Emily. First impression, she kicks ass. I'm not gonna lie, she's got that grittiness to her voice, really powerful, a um, little bit of a raspiness to it, a great tone. So far, I'm really liking it. I only wanted to be part of something. I only wanted to be part of, part of.
Okay, the emptiness machine. Well, let me first say uh, right off the bat, I like it. I like it. Okay, I have some critiques of it, but in general, I do like it. Um, I will say, so we had Mike take the first chorus, Emily take the last two, I think. I kind of wanted Mike to take the third and bring it home, um, but to be honest, uh, what they did here is kind of on par for Linkin Park. It was always, you know, Mike taking the more kind of melodic rapping parts and then um, Chester bringing it home for us. Um, there is no rapping in this one, so it's a little bit off of the normal style of Linkin Park, although there's plenty that are an example of that, but I will say I missed that a little bit. Um, I thought Emily was good. She hit hard. Um, obviously a little bit different from Chester, but to be honest, she is a good um, fill-in for him. Of course, not a replacement, but uh, she sounds good, and I think that she could even take it to the next level. I mean, I, I want to see her more powerful, more aggressive. Obviously, Chester's known for his aggressive, just like throat shredding vocals. So I want to see that from her eventually, and I bet we will. I think this is a great start. Something else I wanted to see, and this is just me because I'm biased because I'm a guitarist and I love guitar. I wanted a little bit of a super good catchy guitar riff in there, or maybe a guitar solo, but that's what wishful thinking <laughs> um and i and and you know uh and then it's wishful thinking because i always want a guitar solo in a song but you can't always get what you want um in general i really like it i'm excited for them i think emily was a really good pick for the band i think she fits in and i think as they mesh more together and create more music you're gonna get um even more of that lincoln park feel um of course you're not gonna get uh, the, the Chester feel ever because he's one of a kind. But Emily does a good job. Let's get that absolutely clear. However, there are some controversies surrounding Emily that I briefly know about, but I don't know about much. So I want to read through some of these and I'll let you know my thoughts um, on it. And uh, then we can also discuss some of these things as well. Okay. Um, I'm going to start here in this uh, BBC article. Um, it starts with, how did people respond to the new lineup? Because there has been some controversy with any replacement of any band member. Obviously, there's going to be some talk because, let's be honest, change just in general is inevitably hard for some people, especially given this circumstance with Linkin Park and the history um, of it up till now. So... How did people respond to the new lineup? Linkin Park unveiled their new look on Thursday, September 5th, alongside a new single, The Emptiness Machine, and plans for a world tour. Initial reactions were positive. Armstrong certainly has big shoes to fill, wrote the New York Times pop critic John pa Perales. But as she proves on this bombastic new track, Armstrong shares Bennington's facility in pivoting between melodic belting and throat shredding screams. Even the hardcore fans on Linkin Park's Reddit page largely seem pleased. She brings the energy and presence needed to match the band's sound without trying to imitate Chester. I, I agree with that. I, I don't think she's trying to uh, imitate Chester. She's obviously doing her own thing. She sounds great. She has her own vibe to her own tone. Um, so I don't think she should um, imitate Chester. Obviously, this is a new era of Linkin Park. So um, I think that she brings something new, but also some familiarity as well. Man, she really nails it, added another. This is a worthy reboot and the best step they could have taken. But others felt the new addition was disrespectful to Bennington's memory. Among them was among them was the singer's son, Jamie, who posted a long statement accusing Shinoda of erasing his father's legacy and saying the band had betrayed the trust of fans. Jamie. So Jamie is Chester's son. Well, first let me let's take a step back a second and understand Jamie's frame of mind because this is trending, millions of people talking about it, M tons of noise going on in Jamie's ear all over the place, and inevitably, um, a lot of feelings are coming up for him, I'm sure. And so it's a lot of people talking about it a lot at once. He probably has a lot of feelings bubbling to the surface. So we got to understand that's probably going on. As far as him saying betrayed the trust, erasing his father's legacy, what I think he's alluding to, and I think this is fair, he probably has a little bit of fear um, that with a new singer introduced and people getting really excited about it, I think he probably has a very valid fear of people 
forgetting Chester's legacy. Of course that would never happen, but if you think about it from their perspective of what it could be, what the future could be, if Lincoln Park continues down this track for years to come, decades to come, say the time that new Lincoln Park has been running versus the time Lincoln Park was with Chester, people of the younger generation might know Lincoln Park as Mike Shinoda and Emily Armstrong rather than Mike Shinoda and Chester Bennington. I don't think that would happen, and it's up to, to, up to us to keep uh, Chester's legacy alive, of course, and his legacy will never die. He's one of a kind. But I could see that fear, and I think it's a valid fear, and I think he's having some feelings like, Lincoln Park is Chester's, Ch Chester's legacy. Why would you mess with that? I think that's valid. On the other hand, there's many cases of band members either passing or leaving the band and the band continues with another member or continues in a different direction. Um, one example that comes to my head just right away is ACDC, but I know there's lots of other examples. I think Allison Chains maybe had that. Um, anyways, there's, there's, I think there's a lot of examples of that and I think that's fine. Um, I wonder if uh, Mike Shinoda and Jamie did have a conversation about it. To be honest, I don't know if Jamie would have any say. I mean, he is the son, but at the same time, the band and the direction the band wants to go probably, you know, takes precedent, of course. But I do wonder if Mike Shinoda did consider um, what Jamie has to say and wanted to leave it alone. Um, and if that was the case, maybe they should have continued with a different name and kind of a new vision. But at the same time, like I said, there's many examples where this has happened before. I don't think there's anything wrong with Linkin Park continuing to make music. And also, he thinks it's getting rid of Chester's legacy. It's kind of keeping it alive because when you think of Linkin Park, you think of Chester Bennington. So really, his legacy is keeping, uh, is keeping alive through the new music and to celebrate him and his past. Comments like those prompted Brent Smith, lead singer of Hard Rock Band Shine Down, to come to Lincoln Park's defense. Something to think about. Do you honestly believe that the members of this iconic band truly think that, of all people, Chester Bennington is replaceable, he wrote on Instagram. The entire world knows he will never be replaceable because he was one of a kind. Facts. But with all that being said, there is an audience that missed the band and their presence and what they represent. So I asked you, all of you, give them the opportunity to not close their chapter, allow them to celebrate their legacy and also the opportunity to create one. Okay, now moving into um, the accusations against Emily Armstrong. Mars Volta singer Cedric Bixler Zavala and his wife Chrissy Carnell Bixler spoke out against Armstrong after she joined the band. The singer reshared a post he had written last year on Dead Sarah's Instagram page saying, do your fans know about your friend Danny Masterson, your rapist friend? Oh. Uh-oh. Um, okay. <laughs> the, post relate, the post related to U.S. actor Danny Masterson, former star of that 70s show who was sentenced to 30 years to life in prison in 2023 after being convicted of two of three forcible rape charges earlier in the year. Oh my gosh, I never even heard about this story. Am I out of touch? 2023, that was last year. Okay, so this is recent. I was going to say, it'd be one thing if, because if, I knew there was these, um, uh, allegations of uh, her being good friends with someone who is a convicted rapist, but I didn't know any of the other details. So this was last year. It would be one thing, because people grow with time and people make stupid decisions and are friends with people for stupid reasons when they're young, you know, like when they're minors, but last year, okay, let's keep reading. I, I, yeah, I, and and it, something also that bugs me is when people hold things over people's head that's like 10, 15, 20 years ago. I think that's a little bit uh, tacky, to be honest. But this is last year. Let's keep that in mind. Colonel Bixler was one of several women who accused Masterson of sexual assault, and while the actor was not convicted on the charges relating to her allegations, he was found guilty on charges brought by two other anonymous accusers. Bixler Zavala and Carnell Bixler, both former Scientologists, have said the church harassed them and other witnesses over their allegations against Masterson, who is also a Scientologist. Ooh, I have heard things. I don't know much about um, Scientology, to be honest, um, but I, I know there's allegations for Emily for that, too. We'll get to that. But I do know Scientology is known widely for being very <laughs> not willing to take criticism or not willing to have anybody criticize Scientology or the people within it. So I can understand why that was probably a big thing. 
Jamie Bennington questioned why Armstrong had been allowed to join the band under these circumstances and accused Linkin Park of failing to vet her properly. One thing also to note real quick, Emily, I will get to how she responded, but Emily Armstrong, we have to remember that she's an entertainer. She's a singer. Although I do pe think people in the limelight should be... Uh, should have a good moral compass and should be upstanding. And I don't think we should put people in a position of fame and power if they aren't, you know, upstanding morally. However, first and foremost, she's an entertainer and a singer. She's not claiming to be Mother Teresa. So just something to put into perspective. I mean, I think you do have to consider things in the past just for the reputation, um, but you also have to consider you need the best person for your band. How did Emily Armstrong respond? The singer posted a statement of her own on Friday addressing some of the allegations against her. Hi, I'm Emily. She wrote in an Instagram story post. I'm so new to many of you, and I wanted to clear the air about something that happened a while back. Several years ago, I was asked to support someone I considered a friend at a court appearance and went to one early hearing as an observer. Soon after, I realized I shouldn't have. I always try to see the good in people, and I misjudged him. I have never spoken with him since. Unimaginable details emerged, and he was later found guilty to say it as clearly a possible i do not condone abuse or violence against women and i empathize with the victims of these crimes okay well she said several years ago i wonder when the trials were um because apparently he was convicted just last year um listen i can give people grace for misjudging people everybody has done it at one point or another in their life that would be my assumption um, obviously this guy did something absolutely horrible and he's doing his time um, and she is not affiliated with him at all anymore. It is a bit pr problematic that this was recent. I didn't know this was recent. My assumption when I heard all the buzz was that it was something someone was trying to bring up from 10 years ago when she was friends with him. For whatever reason, people are friends with people, and sometimes you hear different stories and you get ma manipulated by people. And I can give a little bit of grace. I mean, listen, not everybody's perfect, and a lot of people's friends are not the right people, but I also do... Uh, believe in guilty by association um obviously not for his crimes but guilty for hanging out with terribly 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 terrible people um if she, what she's saying is true that she misjudged him she went to one hearing and then she had nothing to do with him ever again i don't think this is a big deal i'm just saying that objectively uh if if that is 100 percent true and she's done and she completely condemns it forever and always, I hope. Um, I, I have to take her at her word. And again, because I don't know her that well, I'm going to have to take her at her word and just believe that she means well. Yeah, again, I always try to see the good in people too. It's not a good look though, especially since it was in 2023. Is the singer a Scientologist? Armstrong did not address her ties to Scientology in her statement, and it's unclear whether she is still a member. She was born into the church where her parents are both prominent members. Her mother is said to be Gail Armstrong, a former Scientology spokesperson and a senior consulting editor of the church magazine Freedom. Oh, wow. So she doesn't just have ties. She has strong ties. <laughs> Armstrong was also pictured at the Church of Scientology Celebrity Center for a gala celebrating the church's 44th anniversary in 2013. Okay, so over 10 years ago, a photo of the event supplied by the church to Getty Images above saw her posing alongside Cedric Bixler Zavala. Oh, okay. Wow, that's some hair, bro. All right. Armstrong has never publicly commented on her relationship with the church, but several of Dead Sarah's lyrics suggest criticism and rejection of Scientology's teachings. The singer identifies as queer, something that Scientology founder L. Ron Hubbard described as a perversion. The modern church says it does not dictate sexual preferences and denies accusations of homophobia, but Armstrong sang scathingly about religious attitudes to sexuality in the 2018 song Heaven's Got a Back Door. I heard the voices of the preacher telling me all the reasons why I die alone. I'm th through feeling sorry for the things that I can't choose. Fans have theorized that lyrics like these mean Armstrong has left the church, but doing so can be a harrowing experience that involves cutting ties with family members. For now, she has not commented on her ties to Scientology in any capacity. Okay, so that's probably a touchy subject to her. Listen, I don't know much about Scientology. However, I do know the government um, said it was a religion. Or, or, or they, they deemed it a religion, and I think the IRS said that it is uh, non-profitable or whatever. Listen, do I think Scientology is a little bit sketchy? Yeah. But listen, if it's deemed a religion, 
Again, I don't know much about it. I believe in freedom of religion, of course. Um, but yeah, do I think it's sketchy? <laughs> yeah, probably. Do I think it's nonprofit? I don't know. It's one of those things that is just, has a lot of scrutiny, understandably so. If she had ties, okay. If she doesn't, okay. I, I'm not really, I don't really hold anything over her head on that one. It maybe just tells us a little bit of who she is as a person and how she grew up and how who her family is. Um, but I don't think that's a damning feature for her. Generally speaking, um, I think Emily Armstrong is a good fit for the band. I'm excited for what they're gonna do in the future. Linkin Park has entered a new era, so it's exciting. And I think that as they progress as a band and together as as, an, as a new band of Linkin Park, I think that they are going to go in probably a different direction, but I also think they're going to go uh, dig into the roots that are Linkin Park a little bit too. And I'm excited for the journey. I'm here for the journey. I will be following it. And I'm excited for November 15th when the album drops officially. So um, what did you guys think? What do you guys think of Emily Armstrong? What do you guys think of the new song? What do you guys think of Jamie and what he has to say about Chester Bennington and his legacy? All of the goods. Let me know what you guys think. I would love to hear. And thank you guys for watching and catch me next time. Peace.